we're humoring the idea that when we're sitting in the tub and our head is here and our feet are there, that maybe the best view is in the roof to the garage. <laughs> that maybe the better view is to flip it and look that way at the greenhouse and the beautiful garden that will be there. Yeah. So we're thinking that that's the reason. We're gonna try to see if we can pivot this just to see what it'll look like. Then we're gonna move it completely in a different spot in the bathroom today so that we can restore this old clawfoot tub. This thing is so heavy. <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> okay, I'm committed to the idea of changing the location. Oh, I thought I had the heavy end yesterday. Oh, pivot, pivot, <laughs> pivot. Oh, there's a foot now underneath. <laughs> I think you gotta hold it so it doesn't tip. You put your weight on that end for me. <laughs> oh. okay. If I'm standing at the doorway, I feel like I like that the faucet's on this side, but now the tub looks super awkward with the leaning part on this side. So I'm not sure. Let us know what you think. We are gonna center it to the window there so that we can look out either direction. But what direction should this tub go in? So while we're restoring the tub, we're going to move it over to where the original white flooring is. That way we don't have to worry about getting anything on anything that's going to stay in the bathroom. Remember, we are gonna be taking out this section of flooring here to get back to where those holes were from the plumbing where this was installed and then being able to replace this and then keep going once the tub's done. So I keep calling this a clawfoot tub, but there is a problem with why my tub isn't really called a clawfoot tub because I don't have claw feet on my tub. <laughs> so you always dream of having a beautiful clawfoot tub in an old antique house like ours from 1899, but I got gypped on my tub. <laughs> I feel a little, little tub envy of all the really nice pawfoots that have the feet that are actually the little claws. And mine have stubby little stumpy feet. And I would love to think that this is just bubbly like this because of so many years of so many layers of paint. But the reality is, is that this would have to be painted every day of its life since, since 1899. For it to be this chunky on the bottom so for me to soak this and hope and pray that there's claw feet under there would be such a waste of time and i just know that i don't have a claw foot actual claw foot tub <laughs> we've been thinking overnight what are we going to actually do to the tub we are going to be adding some color into this room just with like textiles rugs towels things like that but we want to keep this room pretty neutral with the white and gold and the wood tones our plan was originally to do, of course, gold fixtures. We can't leave these chrome now that we have gold going on. But it does have the beautiful like porcelain spinny knobs and the handheld that we got for it is going to fit this perfectly because the handheld on this tub is broken. So we have the new um, hose with a handheld on it that has the white porcelain and the gold on it already. So that's going to be really nice and it's going to look gorgeous. And of course, as you mentioned from yesterday's comment section, the plumbing that you saw that would run down the back here is also going to be the metallic gold. So it's going to be gorgeous. Was thinking completely white and just do gold feet. But my feet are so not detailed. And if they were those beautiful claws, then how beautiful to make them the antique gold. But now I just feel like I'm accenting something that's just like a bubbly stump. So maybe this tub needs a little bit more than just painting all of this white and then just doing the gold feet. So I'm thinking, maybe we just make a gold tub. What? <laughs> the last day suggested we were looking at clawfoot tubs. There's some that are really cool copper. There's some that are painted black on the bottom. Some are kind of this like tan color that they already kind of tried to do on this tub, which I actually do like, but I don't want to keep it the same just because we're refreshing the bathroom. So what if instead of focal pointing only the feet, we joined the feet with the base and we did the metallic gold here and here and then our restore kit for the white on the inside with the gold faucet. Worst case scenario, we don't like the gold and we paint it over with white. I mean, I'm risking a $10 thing of spray paint to see if this could be ultimately dreamy or need to go back to basics with the white. I'm willing to give it a try, what do you think? First things first. Don't start with oops. <laughs> it's okay. I can fix it. <laughs> first 
first things first, we need to take this off so at least you can prep and paint. This faucet, I believe, has been here for a very, very long time and it's all functioning, which is lovely, but the handheld was broken. So I will show you the handheld that we got to be able to replace what was already there. I tried to match the kind of look of the age of it and the coloring and everything as best as I knew that it would look once I did the metallic gold on it. And keep in mind, maybe spraying faucets isn't like going to be the most durable forever and ever and ever more. Like we did our shower one over here. But when these fixtures are no longer working, we can upgrade and pay the really expensive price to have ones that actually come antique gold. But we're trying to do this on such a tight budget that just to be able to prime them and use the metallic gold on them, this tub is not something that's going to get used every day. We don't use the tub very often. We have this past two years because we didn't have a shower, but now that we have a shower stall, we barely ever will use the tub. I honestly still can't even believe that the tub is not in the middle of the room now that we disconnected it. We waited way too long to do that. We might even need to pick up a new rubber seal, but they'll have them when we get the rest of the plumbing pieces we need. It is a beautiful faucet. So it appears that previous owners have painted this tub. And so I'm really curious to know how bad was the tub under what they painted. I do know that the tub looks terrible even after they painted. It's been very stained since we got here. And I'm sure after wear and tear of us being here, some of the paint is now chipping off. I don't even know if they use the right paint. So it might be interesting to see how hard it's going to be to get this enamel paint that I think it is off of this tub. But you can see where it's peeling off where you see it more looking blue. That's the original tub underneath and this is the paint that they used. I think maybe you gotta stick something in there when I spin. Oh, so that it can't spin. Allow solution to remain on the surface for 30 to 60 minutes. Do not allow the product to dry on the surface. Okay, so I tried to find a stripper that <laughs> wouldn't be as abrasive as like, a paint stripper, you know, than the big metal cans that like will stink up the whole house. I don't know. Try to do this as eco as possible, but still get the results that I need. This is what we're starting with. I mean, I don't know how much worse it can get than this. And God only knows what paint that they used. So should I just try a section, but then we have to wait? No, do the whole thing. You might as well it go, is what it is, right? go in, okay. go all out. Yeah. Gloves, and I'm ready. I think I lost gloves up there. Well, I didn't want to just use shop gloves because I knew that it's potential that it could go through. So I got the actual gloves that I should be wearing. Chase Sexton gloves. Chase Sexton gloves. I'm an adult medium. Alright, let's try this out. We're gonna leave it for 30 to 60 minutes and see if this will start pulling some of this off. So far I don't see any reaction to anything, it's just clumping up. But sometimes this stuff takes some time to react. I feel like I just rubbed like hair conditioner all over it. Yeah, did you use the right bottle? <laughs> right? We have waited about an hour, even an hour and a half almost. And all of that gel that we put on has turned like this sort of brown kind of color, a little bit greeny brown, but it has not done anything to help us remove the paint. So that's part of the problem when you're doing home renovations, that products that are advertised with certain things, you spend money on them and then they end up not doing anything. So some of this scraping in the middle here, I used a little flat scraper just to see if I could get a little bit more of it off and it's not budging at all. So we just ran to the hardware store to go pick up something else and hopefully, fingers crossed, this works. So I'm going to put the camera down and film myself doing this because I don't want Philip in this bathroom while I'm gonna wear a mask putting this on. And then we're gonna evacuate the room, seal up the door, the window's already open, and we're gonna leave it for an hour, and then we're gonna come back and see, hopefully it's gonna have done something. So I'm going to use this instead. And I have used this in the past, I think years ago, doing something with furniture. This stuff is strong and this stuff is smelly, but hopefully it will do the trick. I 
you can already see that it's starting to bubble in a few spots here. Let's wait and see. I wish I knew what kind of paint they used. Okay, you two family, this room is very unbearable. The smell is awful. I need to keep my mask on because it's so bad in here. But what I wanted to show you is that this is now like three quarters of that container full of this stripper. And it did start to bubble in a few spots and then I used the scraper to try to get a little bit more of it off. But some of these areas here, it's just not bubbling. I have no idea what kind of paint that they used. I'm getting somewhere, but definitely thought that at least during today that I would be able to get all of the white from the previous owner painting off of this tub. That's clearly not the case. You can see on all of these edges, it is not bubbling at all and nothing is coming off. So it's kind of frustrating I think I'm gonna leave it for another half an hour or so and then wipe everything out and maybe use a little bit of a scouring pad to see if I can try to loosen anything else up before I maybe do one more coat of it. Okay, it's now evening. I'm just taking my mask off for a second. I'm trying to let this place air out. Um, but I just wanted to show you an update on after about six hours of trying to clear this tub out where I'm at. I've used two full bottles of the stripper. I used one of the Natura stripper and then one of that big metal can that I showed you. I have maybe about a quarter of that second container left, but other than that, I've used absolutely everything. I've done multiple applications. I've tried where when we first got here, we clearly had some of the gel from the previous stuff on. So I didn't know if the second stuff wasn't working because it was counter reacting. So I wiped everything all out and just used the second stuff. Now I've just done the second stuff and I don't know, I don't even know how much progress I'm at at this point to even give you a percentage, but I don't know how many more containers of this I'm gonna have to buy to actually get this completely cleared out. Okay, I'm gonna show you where I'm at. Okay, so this is my underwhelming response of doing all of that stripper today. So much scrubbing, so much scraping, almost two full containers of stripper, and this is where I'm at. Honestly, super frustrating. I know I will get it there and it's going to look amazing when I'm done, but it's so frustrating to feel like you're wasting money and feel like you're wasting time and energy on something that may or may not be, but I'm determined to make this tub look good. It should surely be working better than this after all of that. So I was hoping today to obviously get to at least having the top completely stripped so I could start sanding the bottom and prepping the bottom with even a primer and then being able to do at least the prep kit for the inside of the tub. Clearly underestimated how long this is going to take me to get the inside done. I'm not discouraged where I'm going to stop, but I am frustrated and I need to just set this down for the day. And so I think the best solution for me is to just leave this overnight, give it another really good thorough clean in the morning and do that last quarter of a jar that I have of the second stripper. See if now that everything is out and everything's dry, if it will activate and bubble up some of this paint. But if not, I think my option is gonna be sand this whole tub right down to the actual original tub material that's there. Who knows how many layers are underneath, how many layers are on top of that, but I can see that bluish gray white that you see at the bottom of this, that's the real tub color. If you have any suggestions for me on what you think I should do with this tub with getting this stripped out, then leave them down in the comments. If you have suggestions on what you think I should do with the lower part of the tub for the aesthetic portion of this project, then leave them down in the comments so I can look those over after over the next day or so while I'm working on this tub restore.